don't forget the money, man. here at the new Mac Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Monday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great through these crazy and COVID chaotic times. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all my videos. So today, we're going addiction. And actually, more just drugs. You know, I've done a couple of my crazy life stories where I spoke on ketamine. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, story number three, my crazy life, ketamine trips. So, for a long time, I hated ketamine. You know, ketamine taken in small doses is kind of like getting drunk. You know, you feel like your feet are really close to the ground. It's hard to walk. You know, and I had a lot of bad experiences with ketamine because if you have no tolerance to it and there's alcohol involved, you're almost guaranteed to get sick or end up in a K-hole somewhere waking up on some park bench. You know, we got stories about that, but we'll get to that at a later date. But this story that I'm going to get into you about is the first time that I really enjoyed it. Now, disclaimer, never do ketamine. It's a horrible for your body. It's crystal shards. So when you inhale it into your nose, it turns into crystals in your body and just tears through your digestive system and can leave you incontinent or whatever the word is and just rip your bladder apart. So avoid it at all costs. I'm sure if you used it once or twice in your past, you have nothing to worry about, but you don't want it to become a habit because it can mess you up in the long term. But anyways, so I'm at my house and my boy comes over with his girl. And, you know, at the time I was living in this tiny little room. I posted the picture on my channel before this tiny little room in close to Moss Park, this little dingy rooming house that I lived in when I got out of my first pen bit. And, you know, I remember that I was using ketamine on parole because at the time they weren't testing for it. And, uh, you know, being the addict that I was, I needed something to get me through the day because, you know, I was a drug addict. And, uh, you know, when you're a drug addict, you just want to get stuck. So that's what I did. Right. But this day was a little different. So I remember my buddy came over and it's a tiny room and him and his girl are sitting on the bed, which is just a single bed against the wall. And I'm sitting in like a computer chair. We have trance music on like really low and trance music is like, I don't know, it's like spiritual electronic music. Okay. It's very emotional and stuff. If you're in a intoxicated state. And I remember that the volume just being like volume two and all of a sudden the volume is just boom, boom, boom. Like I'm in a club, okay? The room just grows. All of a sudden, I'm looking across the room at my boy, like literally staring across a huge empty room at my boy. And I remember thinking to myself, what the f is going on? Like when you do ketamine, it cuts off... It, cuts off your your brain or your central nervous system from your body so you you you'll look like you're a drooling mess laying there but in your mind you'll be in some totally hallucinogenic dimension i don't know how to explain it really but it's a weird high because it's a cold feeling comes over your body there's not a whole lot of feeling because it's a an anesthetic it makes you kind of numb and there's not much physical sensation if that makes sense to your body you kind of become cold and I didn't like that about it but 
I remember just sitting there and thinking, wow, what the f is going on? Like, this room is massive. How does this happen? And I remember all of a sudden I'm at the ceiling and I'm floating up, looking down at my buddy, right? And, and, and you know, at this point in time, it was just like amazement to me, but I didn't really realize what was going on. And all of a sudden I realized that I was floating over myself looking down on myself, laying there, drooling on myself in a chair like a K-tard. Because anybody who knows who's been around a lot of people who do K, you become a K-tard. It's like hanging out with a two-year-old. But in your mind, you're in like this futuristic world or you could be, you know, in East Asia, you could be running from lions. It, you know, just depends. But I remember looking down at myself thinking, what the hell is going on right now? I, I, I don't know if this is right. And I remember my heart dropping. And suddenly I came to, and I remember my boy saying, oh, what you think you want to try? No, I'm good. And I remember, as an addict, you chase a high. That's what you do. You chase a high. And I remember for the first time, in my drug using life feeling satisfied feeling like I had achieved something and I don't need any more I'm good like this drug has given me something and taught me something about myself uh, you know I can't tell you exactly what it was now but at the time I remember feeling um, quite elated quite satisfied but I I've had enough and as an addict, that never happens. That's an oddity, you know? And, and, I, and I guess that's special, K. I I guess that's uh, just that night because, you know, I ended up becoming quite addicted to it and doing it every day, every day, every day. And the only thing that made me stop was K-Pains. And if you know what K-Pains are, they're deep in your gut. And it's like, it's hard to explain, but it's super uncomfortable. And they just literally come out of nowhere and there's nothing you can do except wait them out. Uh, honestly, I would suggest staying away from K at all costs. I know some people that have died from ketamine. And, you know, it, it's put out there like it's a safe drug. And people don't OD off it. And you can do, you know. But as your tolerance builds, as your tolerance builds, it can get to a point where you actually become anesthetized. Like you pass out face down. Wham! face into the mud because you literally just black out on your feet that can happen that's why they actually have ketamine scheduled as a date rape drug but you know i, I don't understand how that could happen because you'd have to ingest so much of it but I, I just know some people that have had real bad effects from it it affected my best friend really badly uh i remember his mom who actually committed suicide rest in peace terrible thing but I remember her one day telling me a story about waking up in the middle of the night three o'clock in the morning going to get a drink of water and seeing her son doing a crab walk back and forth across the lawn and that's special K like I remember this dude having some of the craziest trips like waking up in the middle of the night and he's taking out all the light bulbs in my place like what are you doing man talking like beep beep boop beep 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 like uh you know, some weird character, but, you know, at the same time you feel for him because you know that this drug is having long lasting mental effects on him. Obviously I share my stories with you guys. So you guys don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my finger, nobody's addicted to drugs. Nobody's doing crime. Everybody's living a great life. That is what I would do, but that's not reality. Life is tough, and sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And sometimes people fall into drug addiction because of trauma or just, you know, they feel like they can't cope with life. I've been there. I've done that. And I know that it can be tough. And I know sometimes you just go from one addiction to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, trying to quit one thing after another. Just keep trying. I'm telling you, eventually you will get to a point where you're done. And that's where I'm at. And I hope that you guys get there soon. So by sharing this story with you guys, I'm not in any way glamorizing ketamine because 
I think it's a pretty shitey drug. But I have had some epiphanies on that drug and had some highs that were literally life-changing. And that day was one of them. Uh, having an out-of-body experience for me was scary. It made me rethink my drug use. It made me question if it was an overdose. Was that me dead? Or was that just a trip? I, I didn't know. And, and it really made me become a conservative drug user who really thought about the amounts that I did, about testing before I did it. And I guess in some way helped keep me alive. You know, because I'm here now sharing these videos with you guys when actually that's a miracle because the things that I've done in my life, all the mistakes that I've made, it's a goddamn miracle that I'm even here standing and able to share these stories with you guys. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. Now, I would like to have some interviews with some addicts. So if any addicts who have been deep in the pit of addiction and would really like to come on and share their story and feel like their story can help, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, I think sometimes I can forget about the addiction side of the channel because the prison side of the channel is what gets the views. But, you know, the the, the addiction in my life was the most catastrophic part of it. So I can't neglect that and I can't forget about that. Love each and every one of you. The new Matt Clark.